It's one of the largest operational radar dishes in the world. The ball, or we call it the radome, is basically a fiberglass structure. It's only about two centimeters thick, and it protects the antenna and the positioner that, that sort of points it where it needs to go from the winds. Because the, the dish is so big, it's, a, it's essentially a sail. It would struggle to keep a constant rotation rate, uh, and it would create a lot more load on the tower. So essentially that ball protects the antenna and also makes the tower more aerodynamic. My name is Peter Lebuc. Uh, I'm the engineering authority for the Canadian Weather Radar Replacement Program. I'm also the manager of the Observing System and Engineering Group. My role as engineering manager is to manage the engineering services that we provide to our uh, network operations groups, as well as other stakeholders. A weather radar works basically on the principles of echolocation. So in a similar way where if you were shouting into a room, your voice bounces off the wall, it comes back moments later. We do the same thing with RF pulses. And as they travel through the atmosphere, a small amount of energy reflects off of hydrometeors or, or particles in the sky, in the atmosphere. And that comes back to the radar, we receive it. And based on its timing and signal strength, we can tell where it is. Radar is a very, very critical tool for meteorologists. Uh, that's how we know remotely what's going on in the atmosphere. Uh, that's how we know if it's raining or snowing or if there are severe storms, thunderstorms that are affecting Canadians. My name is Gerald Cheng and I'm a morning preparedness meteorologist from Environment and Climate Change Canada. My role is uh, a communicator of uh, weather information, uh, particularly for our friends from different media outlets and also for different levels of government here in Ontario. Meteorologist comes into this uh, forecast office and uh, once they get in here, they start looking at different sort of data, satellite, radar, weather stations, and they start analyzing what's going on in the atmosphere so that we know what's going on with the weather. Dual polarization technology basically takes the RF pulse that's generated by our transmitter and splits it into a vertical polarization and a horizontal polarization. That emits from the antenna into the atmosphere and those polarizations are retained and what comes back uh, is received in two separate receiving channels. So we can then compare the signal strength in vertical to horizontal for a given distance from the radar that that sample was taken and get information about the types of hydrometeors. We can also then pick out bugs and birds. It allows us to distinguish the shape of what's falling so we can tell the difference between rain, snow, hail, for example, much more precisely. You know, we see a signature in the data sets that we get back from the radar that allow us to confidently say that is hail. And we need to issue a, a hail warning for that area because there's, there's a high risk of hail damage. We need to understand, is it really weather that we are seeing on the radar or is it something else? That's something that we are trained to do so that we are ready uh, for these things. Because the radars are so complex, training's pretty involved. It's a three-week program just for the basic maintenance certification. That requires a radar to be taken offline. These radars have to run 24-7, 365 to be able to do their job to forecast severe weather. So taking a radar offline for that duration is, is difficult. The training radar is actually essentially almost identical to the operational radars and that's on purpose because we want to create a platform for the technicians to learn how to service the radar. We also use it for troubleshooting. It's sighted in a way that doesn't make it a great weather radar as far as its view of the atmosphere, but it's essentially a duplicate of an operational system like you see here. The training system allows us to basically deliver training, to do our troubleshooting, to test out parts from the field or new upgrades without influencing the network's ability to serve the forecasters and Canadians with severe weather forecasting. We know that climate change uh, makes a certain weather events more frequent and we rely on this data to basically know what's going on so that when the conditions are severe enough, then we issue public weather alerts. And these alerts will go on the WeatherCan app and also on our website. 
That's key is to use this data to provide information to Canadians so that Canadians can stay safe. These radars help us adapt to climate change by giving us more precise and more timely warnings to severe weather. Canadians have a modernized, sustainable and reliable weather radar network that's designed around the changing climate. The systems have been hardened with built-in redundancies to make sure that they perform when severe weather is at its worst.